call this uh, Village of Green Hills Council meeting for December 12, 2023 to order. The clerk call the roll. Ms. Hermes? Here. Ms. Wather? Here. Mr. Lee? Here. Ms. Osmanoglu? Here. Mayor Moore? Here. Mr. Halter, you guys Here. are getting mm -hmm. And Ms. Hudson has excused absence. Okay, we have a prayer by Maria Walter. <clears throat> Lord, we ask you to send the spirit of servanthood upon all of us who have gathered here this evening to do your work for the benefit of our community. We ask you to bless our elected and appointed officials so they may deliberate with wisdom and act with courage. On this uh, Christmas season coming to us, may the Prince, of, the Prince of Peace bring peace to the world and uh, let it begin with everybody here in the village and uh, we be an example, be a star for others to follow. In the name of our brother mm -hmm. Jesus, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. All right. It doesn't appear to have Jennifer Weikert here tonight. We have no public hearings. Okay. Uh, and uh, so we have reports of municipal officials, municipal manager Yvonne Kovac. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I will review the legislation first that we have tonight. Um, the first is the renewal of our agreement with the Green Hills Fire Department. I, um, Ms. Hermes will probably cover that. Okay, so I won't go through that. Um, the second item, I think we had talked to you at a previous council meeting that we had a 13.1% um, increase from Anthem. That did not improve as the process went forward. So. Um, comparing some of the other ones we've heard about out there, though, we're pretty lucky we got the 13. Uh, still, that's the highest one we've had in quite a while, but there's a, the renewal is on for that tonight. Um, there is a new fee schedule in your packet for 2024. Um, nothing significant is different on there, with the exception of we added the community garden fee of $25 per bed. Um, and there had been an error under mayor's court fee. It, for some reason, said $3 and um, needed to say $25, so we corrected that. Okay. Everything else stayed the same. Uh, the next resolution is typical. We see that quite often on assessments. You received a revised copy this morning, uh, this evening, because two of the individuals came in and paid, so um, okay. that's the purpose for a revision. Of course, we have our annual permit appropriation for 2024 um, that Deb has been working hard on. She is here tonight in case you have any questions um, about what is in front of you tonight. Um, the last item is establishing a new salary schedule for our full-time maintenance worker positions. And as, as you know, and as we've talked about for quite a while, it is really tough finding people to fill those positions so um i have proposed if you look at the um item there's this it, it gives you the first line is the current salary schedule for the full-time maintenance worker and then below it is the proposed starting at 1961 um, i wanted to get that as close to 20 dollars, which seems to be like the starting salary in a lot of places certainly not the highest but um they're probably aren't any lower. So um, we'll start with that. Goes up a dollar uh, the next two years. That was a 5% increase and then um, it went to a two and a half for the next two years. So that, if you remember back in 2019, I think it was council passed schedules for all the hourly employees. We corrected, uh, we made, didn't correct, we did a totally different one for the police department a couple years thereafter, but um, all the other hourly individuals were continuing on that same step schedule. We're in year five and that resolution was written so that in, after five years, 
um, the first step drops off, step number two becomes step number one, and we had 2% on the end. So we're in that year, and so hourly employee, or anybody other than the service worker, if you approve this, uh, we'll still be on that same schedule moving forward into next year. Um, okay, off of legislative items, just a couple things. I know we, we had a council meeting recently, so I don't want to take up too much time on some of these same items, um, but I'm sure you all noticed that our guardrail, a lot of it is missing uh -huh. oh. again. <laughs> Just, I think it's only been a couple weeks maybe since yeah. we had it fixed, but uh, nonetheless, it's certainly serving its purpose. So um, I think we got an estimate around $6,000 to repair that damage um, this second time. And uh, it was a very high rate of speed as well as an OBI, right, Chief? Correct. So, What was the cost on the first time? Uh, it was around 4000 So. Oh, the, the right. whole thing when we had it done was, yeah, oh, okay, just, the yeah. first I just wondered if we're going to be having an ongoing well, cost. Well, yes, and we are hoping to be able to collect. We Collecting from insurance isn't real fast. Okay. Um, you know, we're trying to collect from the guilty parties, but um, okay. hopefully we can okay. eventually. Because, yes, this <laughs> proved to be very costly. But the first time, were you able to collect any from the insurance? That's I still in process. Okay. That, that's only been a few weeks, actually, that that got underway. So. Okay. Not not yet, but we hope to be able to. Okay. Um, also wanted to let you know on our grass cutting, we're actually going into the second year of a three-year program, so we won't have any increase in that cost going into next year. Um, we have not received our property and liability insurance proposal yet. We're supposed to have that um, possibly this week. Uh, have apparently their board meeting was later than usual, and that's they approve all of those. So <coughs> hopefully, we will hear soon, and we'll have it in place before the end of the year. Um, I think at the last meeting, I mentioned that this work should get started on the service garage, the roof, and that is being done right now. So that's great. Before we have any significant weather this winter. Hopefully we won't. Um, the famous sinkhole on Bachman is going to be repaired this week. And just for the record, Waterworks is the only line that runs under that hole. Um, and they insist it's not theirs. That's okay. We're going to fix it, get that over with. We also have a catch basin down um, the lower level of the pool, like down in the community garden area that uh, needs to be repaired. That takes a significant amount of drainage back there. Um, there will also be water line work taking place on DeWitt Street again. That's related to the uh, water feeding the new homes. Um, so that continues to move forward. And the other thing I put at your place tonight was a memo, um, which typically I would do in January, but I, I did it now because I'm not going to be here in January, um, I, that the chief will be the person that I um, put in charge in my absence. That's it for me. Thank you. Comments or questions? Right, moving on, uh, our law director is in, on his way. Okay. Uh, look at counsel, Teresa Lally. Nothing tonight. Chief of Police, Jim Howard. Thank you, Mayor. Um, month of November, the department, we responded to 173 incidents. Uh, we made 16 arrests, 14 of them for warrants. Responded to 34 squad runs. We assisted other agencies in 15 different cases. Uh, officers issued 34 traffic citations and 64 traffic warnings. Investigated five auto accidents during the month of November. Uh, and through the month of November, from the beginning of the year, we've taken 122 criminal offense reports. This is down 20 from the same time period last year. Uh, also in November, we had No Shave November, which I know the officers were excited about. Uh, four officers participated, Sergeant Holbrook, Officer Lenhoff, Officer Mayberry, and Officer Moore all participated. In order to partic participate, they had to donate $50 to the cause. Uh, with that, we raised that $200, and then other personnel that didn't support a beard also contributed an additional $150. So on December 6th, just this last week, we uh, presented a $350 check to Gretchen Ramstetter, who's with Cancer Support Community of Greater Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky, for the cause. 
2024 is right around the corner. You probably saw in your mailboxes, and I have some for the public, some refrigerator calendars, got all of our contact information, non-emergency number, and so forth. So if anybody in the public wants to stop up and grab a refrigerator calendar, be glad to give them one and maybe a Buskin cookie with it, because we still have a few left. Uh, and also, just like to wish everybody a happy holiday. We don't want people to forget about vacation listings, vacation checks. So if they're going away, if anybody in the public is going away for the holiday, don't hesitate to either call our office and get on a vacation listing where officers can check your doors, or you can do it online through the website and submit that also. So that's all I have unless you have any questions. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. All right, and I have a court, a mayor's court, a Bank balance is $24,793.16. Checks to be issued to the state of Ohio, $1,119. To Hamilton County, $42. And to the village of Green Hills, $4,696. And I uh, just, just wished everybody a happy holidays. And uh, uh, we're going to have uh, the vice mayor uh, in charge of the Vice Mayor Awards for Christmas nights. <laughs> it's a tough and, responsibility. And, and have you picked a date? The 18th. And so At December 18th. the 18th, make sure you turn your lights on. And uh, we'll be out judging, see who's got good lights this year. All right, reports of committees, community development, Jeff Holder. Uh, community development did not meet this last time, so I do not have a report. Okay. Safety, Melanie Hurwitz. Uh, no reports at this time, but I will have a re resolution concerning uh, a renewal contract with the Green Hills Volunteer Fire Department. Um, and I know we're also um, looking on having a frank discussion about um, the fire department in February this year, just because I know they're having some struggles. So we want to catch up and touch base and see what else, how we can support them. Do you have anything for Rachel with uh, recreation? No. Okay. This one. Service and Streets, Jennifer Osmonigo. Um, first of all, I want to thank the Streets and Services Department for their great leaf cleanup. And does that, how long is that extending? To the 20th. Okay, that's awesome. Because yeah. I procrastinated on my leaves and then no, I no, take them out. No, no, no. Letting them blow to your neighbor's yard. <laughs> no, we get everyone else's and all oh, on our street, sure. so I just try to weed. So I'm going to pass this out to everyone. This is a survey for Falcon Lane residents um, about parking. So we'll get this out. There's a deadline um, for that to be received back to the office by December 29th. So we'll see what kind of response we get back from this. Um, you know, we're throwing the idea about the permits and if they want to do anything at all. No. So hopefully this will yield some helpful information about the parking. And then after we get these back, then we can work on scheduling a meeting with the residents of Falcon about what they want to do. That's all I have. Happy holidays, everyone. Thank you. Right. Governmental Affairs, Laws and Rules, Maria Walter. Within May, but we will be together with a uh, safety meeting in February. Okay. Finance and Audit, Jack Lee. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, the committee met with the manager and the finance director to uh, review the appropriations for 2024 found them to be in order, and uh, uh, although we've got a lot to do next year <laughs> financially, but uh, we'll, we seem to be in good shape, so, um, and I'll have action uh, late, later to uh, discuss, so that's it. Okay. See our law director made it. Do you want to make any comments? <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> uh, first, I apologize for uh, being late, but I had another council meeting at 6 o'clock about as far away 
Well, it was in Terrace Park. And there's no good way to get it no. from <laughs> Terrace Park here. Right there. Uh, so I'm assuming I missed my report. Uh, the only thing I was going to mention, um, and you may have already talked about it, uh, was just in follow-up to the passage of issue two from the ballot um, back in November related to adult use uh, marijuana. You may have seen that some communities are starting to adopt a moratorium um, <clears throat> just to put a pause on things until they can kind of wrap your head around what what the law is right now. I can tell you that the law went into effect, well, the law that was passed on the ballot went into effect December 7th. And I know of at least three bills that were introduced or pending that would make changes to it. Uh, the Senate just passed something Wednesday of last week that would make some changes. And so if, if any, I'm not suggesting council, you can do whatever you want or refer it to a committee or, but if there is a reason for a moratorium, it's really just so we can let the state law get settled and we can figure out what it really is. And then you can make a more informed decision on what you may or may not want to do. I thought we had something in place. Yeah, I thought we already had something in place. No, um, so this is the this is the <laughs> this is the trick. Uh, okay. Back in 2016, uh, medical marijuana was legalized, and there's a whole program that governs that. And back then, council did take action mm -hmm. to regulate medical marijuana dispensaries and other businesses. Uh, I think the way the way Green Hills did it, I believe you you identify them as conditional uses in certain districts. But those definitions back then were very specific to only uh, medical marijuana dispensaries. Under the new law, there may be, I mean, again, this is we're waiting for this part to get settled. There will be a separate licensing process and there may be separate dispensaries that are not medical marijuana dispensaries, but only adult use marijuana dispensaries. So if you want to regulate that type of business, you, you'll need to take, either take new action or go back and revise the action we took back in 2016. But that seemed, that's the issue that most communities are, are, are kind of running into, is that what they did back then it was the only thing we knew. The only definitions we had was uh, for medical ma marijuana dispensaries and cultivators and processors. So um, that's why you know some co some communities are uh, adopting a moratorium just so they can figure out: do they need to go back and change what they did some years ago? Do they want to do anything? Um, so that's that's it, and I can. It just buys us time to evaluate. Yeah, right. yeah. It doesn't. I, I want to be clear that it, it. Well, first of all, there are only very limited things that you even have the authority to, to deal with when it comes to this, um, and it's typically just you. You have the authority to either prohibit or limit the number of, uh, what they're, what the original, ballot language called adult use cannabis operators. But it's the same thing. It's the dispensaries, the um, processing facilities, and the cultivating facilities. That's really the only decision you have to make, but um, I can tell you that as silly as this is, the what was adopted at the ballot created chapter 3780 of the revised code. Everything is referred to as adult use cannabis, adult use cannabis operators, adult use cannabis users. The bill that the Senate just passed Wednesday completely deletes all of that, moves it to the existing section of the revised code that regulates medical marijuana, and it now refers to it as adult use marijuana operators, not cannabis. So, I mean, there's just, there are tweaks in the wording tweaks in some of the regulation. We're just waiting to see how it all plays out. And, and again, if, if you even consider a moratorium, it has no bearing on almost you know 90% of what the rest of the law would do. It, you can't have a moratorium that has anything to do with possession 
of it because that's legal under a different section. The amounts that people can have, the you know, lots of other issues related to it. You won't have any decision point on most of it. It really just boils down to the um, dispensary. The yeah, the dispensary uses and uh, what what a lot Store of places product. are doing is essentially that you're trying to figure out if you want it to be consistent with how you've already chosen to regulate different type of dispensary. And isn't it true the bill also said local jurisdictions can't collect a tax on it? That's <laughs> right. I, I can tell you in one of the one of the draft bills that I saw that was introduced, they tried to make a change that would allow uh, locals to to at least be more involved in the taxing. But I, I don't think that's gotten any traction. Um, State so. does it all. Well, mm -hmm. I, I mean, the way the way the law is set up, it, it says what the tax is, what <clears throat> excuse me, what the tax is, and the different kind of uh, funds that how it gets split up. Mostly to the jails. Uh, it's that. It's well, and the, like the new um, the 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 change that the Senate approved last week. Um, also. I don't know if this was from the original or part of a change, but it also would defer more money to uh, like substance abuse programs. It would also, the new version, create a fund that would that is there to assist people that have already been convicted of prior uh, marijuana crimes. Uh, it would assist them in the paying the expungement fees to get that taken care of. Um, so, uh, like, like I said, there are a number of moving parts on this. So, uh, if you're interested in a moratorium, it doesn't have anything to do with your personal feelings about how you know what you, how you feel about the issue or or anything. It really just puts a pause on things. It preserves the status quo until you have time to see what the it's, well, really, until the state has time to finalize what the rules are, and then. You can look at what the final rules are and make a more informed decision on what you may or may not want to do. Jeff, is the um, moratorium, is it a six month maximum? I'll tell you, the way I, um, I've drafted some already, um, and I think I, I drafted one for you guys. <laughs> you know, when the medical marijuana w was starting, we did a moratorium for 180 days. As that was coming to a close, the state had still not finished all of their regulations, so we extended it another 180 days. If I'm, I know a lot of communities did that. I think we did that yeah, here we as did well. That. So I will tell you, I just drafted this first one to just say 360 days, just to double the 180 to start with, just so we wouldn't have to come back and extend anything. If if you if everything gets settled and you make a decision on what you want to do before that time is up, we just repeal it, make the moratorium go away, <clears throat> and adopt whatever or nothing, whatever you may choose to do. Do do we need to maybe insert some wording in our agreements for the community garden thing? No, no, no. I mean, the. I mean, I, 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 you know, no, saying. that's that's fair, fair enough. But no, the um, okay. any provisions related to the home grow uh, are it's it's highly regulated. You can't grow it outside. It has to be indoors. It has to be not just indoors, but in an area indoors that you. I don't know exactly how you're supposed to do it, but that would prevent somebody under the age of 21 for like you have to have a locked closet or locked room or something to that effect so it's no one is going to be it, it's not legal it, even under any version of the law that's out there it's not legal to grow it outside it all has to be grown you know, indoors and in a pretty regulated environment but i don't know what people plan and where they plant things well i i, I just i just know some of the pepper plants that were grown there not only could they have been unedible but they were or inedible but they you know yeah they're pretty hot <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, okay. so again right. that's it I, it's just something to, for council to think about um, there's no
particular rush to do it um, because, like I said, you've already regulated medical <coughs> marijuana dispensaries. Um, and even under the bill, uh, what was passed by the Senate last week, it actually proposes to temporarily allow existing medical marijuana dispensaries to also sell uh, to just you know adult users um, because it's going to take just like with medical marijuana it's going to take nine months or more for them to get the whole system up and running so it, it'll take some time before they can actually issue licenses for uh, adult use retail dispensaries but they existing ones could be converted to it very quickly, but you don't have any existing ones because you've already regulated it. So not a particular rush, but I also, I wouldn't, wouldn't wait too long because the law changes about every other day, <laughs> or at least new <laughs> bills are introduced every other day. So we'll, um, we'll just keep an eye on it and keep you uh, informed of where things stand and try to answer any questions that you might have. That's that's all I have. Sorry to interrupt the meeting. There's, no, no, that's good. And is everybody aware of the former Kmart place being a marijuana growing facility now up here in Forest Park? Mm -hmm. Yep. The one that I kept wondering why the mm -hmm. security fences mm -hmm. were going up around mm -hmm. and everything. What are yeah. they doing there? Well, they're growing marijuana. Where is this? The former <laughs> Kmart up by near uh, where Home Depot is in Forest Park. It's a uh, oh, car, that dead end there. Yeah. 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 75,000 square feet of growing space, the capability to go to 150,000 square feet. Top notch stuff, supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's Were you finished, Jack? <coughs> yeah, the, uh, yeah. The, the, the community the garden, garden, yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> All right, this is an opportunity for residents to make comments solely regarding legislation so on the current agenda. <coughs> uh, when recognized, please come forward to the podium, complete your sign-in sheet, verbally indicate if you're a resident of Green Hills or a non-resident, and state your comments. Comments will be limited to four minutes. All right, no unfinished business. New business, resolution 2023-26-S, authorizing the municipal manager to enter into an agreement with the Green Hills Fire Department, Inc. Ms. Hermes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Resolution number 2023-R26-S, authorizing the municipal manager to enter into an agreement with the Green Hills Fire Department, Incorporated. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the Council of the Village of Green Hills, Ohio, Section 1, that the municipal manager is hereby authorized to enter into the agreement as atta attached as Exhibit A and be re referenced made a part hereof with Green Hills Fire Department, Inc. for the period beginning January 1, 2024 through December 31, 2025. Section 2, that the finance director is hereby authorized to pay the Green Hills Fire Department for services as outlined in the agreement. Section 3, that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon its adoption. Mr. Mayor, I am so moved for the adoption of this resolution. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any other comments? Hearing none, the clerk call the council. Mr. Walter? Aye. Ms. Hasmanovu? Aye. Mr. Lee? Aye. Ms. Walker? Aye. Ms. Herman? Aye. Okay, resolution number 2023 R26 S passes. Next resolution. Uh, number 2023 R27 F authorizing the municipal manager to enter into an agreement with Anthem for providing health insurance coverage for the employees of the village of Green Hills. Mr. Lee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Re resolution 2023 R27 F authorizing the municipal manager to enter into an agreement with the Anthem for the providing health insurance coverage for the employees of the village of Green Hills. Whereas the Village of Green Hills provides health insurance benefits for eligible employees, and whereas the Village has utilized Moran Associates to request and review proposals for health insurance coverage from various carriers and determine that the proposal mm -hmm. submitted by Anthem is the best, best proposal for the Village in the terms of quality, service, 
and adaptability and reflects a continuation of the current plans. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Village of Green Hills, Ohio, Section 1, that the municipal manager is hereby authorized to enter into an agreement with Anthem for the purpose of providing health insurance for eligible employees for the term January 1, 2024 through December 31st, 2024. Section 2, that the village will offer the blue access option D57 from Anthem. The village will continue with the 80% employer, 20% employee premium split. Section 3, that the finance director is hereby authorized to pay Anthem monthly, pre monthly premiums totaling an annual amount of approximately $195,000 said amount fluctuating depending upon the number of persons enrolled in, in the plan. Section 4, that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon its adoption. Mr. Mayor, I move for the adoption of this resolution. Second. Mm -hmm. Moved and seconded. Uh, any comments? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, uh, clerk of the council. Mr. Lee. Aye. Ms. Osman Aye. Ms. Wather? Aye. Ms. Hermes? Aye. Mr. Halter? Aye. Okay, resolution number 2023-R27-F 20, passes. Next resolution number 2023-R28-F 20, adopting the 2024 Green Hills fee schedule, Mr. Lee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Resolution 2023-R28-F adopting the the 2024 Green Hills fee schedule, whereas the village is determined that it is necessary to assess fees for certain services, and whereas council updates the fee schedule annually, now therefore be resolved by the council of the village Green, Green Hills, Ohio, that section one, the council of the village Green Hills hereby adopts the fee schedule as set forth in exhibit A, attached to here to attached hereto and incorporated herein by reference. Section two, that this resolution shall be and is effective from and after the earliest period allowed by law. Mr. Mayor, I move for the, resolu the, the passage of this resolution. Second. Been moved and seconded. I think you've already commented on the change on that, right? All right. Third poll of the council. Ms. Walker. Aye. Mr. Halter? Aye. Ms. Ospinoglu? Aye. Ms. Hermes? Aye. Mr. Lee? Aye. Okay, resolution number 2023-R28-F 20, passes. Next resolution number 2023-R29-SNS authorizing assessments on certain properties in the village of Green Hill. Ms. Ospinoglu? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Resolution number 2023-R29 adopting the 
cost $198.31 for a total of $579.96. Section 2, all amounts collected as a result of this resolution shall be placed into the general fund of the Village of Green Hills. Section 3, this resolution shall be effective immediately upon its passage. Mr. Mayor, I move for the adoption of this resolution. We have a second. I'll second. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, then moved and seconded. Uh, any comments? Third poll of the council. Mr. Holter? Aye. Ms. Hermes? Aye. Mr. Lee? Aye. Ms. Osmanoglu? Aye. Ms. Walker? Aye. And resolution number 2023 R29 SNS passes. Next resolution number 2023 R30 F approving the annual permanent appropriations for 2024. Mr. Lee? Thanks. Mr. Mayor, apologize for reading ahead here. Uh, resolution 2023 R30-F, resolution approving the annual permanent appropriations for 2024. A resolution to make permanent appropriations for, the cur for current expenses and other expenditures of the Village of Green Hills, State of Ohio during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2024 pursuant to the Exhibit A, Permanent Appropriations for 2024, attached hereto and by reference made a part hereof. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Village Green Hills, State of Ohio, Section 1, to provide for the current expenses and other expenditures of the vill Village of Green Hills during the fiscal year ending December 31st, 2024. The following sums be and are hereby set aside and appropriated as follows, namely, that there be appropriated from the general fund $3,029,510, that there be appropriated from, from the special revenue funds 2 million $220,474, that there be appropriated from the debt bond retirement fund $47,414, that there be appropriated from the special assessment fund $50,000 for a grand total of $5,347,000. $398 for all funds. Section 2, that the village finance director is hereby authorized to draw warrants for payments from any of the foregoing appropriations upon receiving proper cert certificates and vouchers, therefore approved by the board or officers authorized by law to approve the same or in an ordinance or a resolution of council to make the expenditures provided that there are no warrants shall be drawn or paid for salaries or wages except to persons employed by authority of and in accordance with law or, or ordinance section three and any necessary changes to be made to the appro appropriations below the legal limit of the of control can be made by the finance director with approval of the municipal manager. Any changes to the appropriation at or above the legal limit of control require village council approval. Section four, that this resolution shall take effect immediately upon passage. Mr. Mayor, I move for the adoption of this resolution. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, any comments, questions? Uh, just just a point of clarification, general fund is just the, the norm, normal operating expenditures, uh, special revenue funds are the special accounts, police department, uh, fire contract, um, uh, mowies, so on and so forth. Uh, special assessment is the uh, tree, tree fund. So just a little, little clarification there. Clerk of the Council. Ms. Walker. Aye. Ms. Hermes. Aye. Mr. Halter. Aye. Mr. Lee. Aye. Ms. Osmanoglu. Aye. 
Okay, resolution number 2023-R30-F, approving the annual permanent appropriations passes. Next resolution, 2023-R31-F, establishing a new salary schedule for the full-time maintenance worker position in the service department. Mr. Lee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Resolution 2023-R31-F, establishing a new salary schedule for the for the full-time maintenance worker position in the service department. Be it resolved by the Council of Village Green Hills, State of Ohio, that Section 1 for the Service Department job classification of full-time maintenance worker identified in Exhibit A to this resolution incorporated here in and by reference made a part of hereof uh, a new compensation schedule is outlined. Advancement from step to step will occur every year and shall be effective in the in the first full pay period of the appropriate fiscal year based upon based on the scout the schedule pardon me movement to the next pay step will be based upon the recommendation of the department head to the municipal manager as follows a in the last two months of the fiscal year each employee's performance will re be reviewed by their supervisor who will submit a written recommendation for the for movement to the next step to the appropriate department head. To be eligible for such move, movement, the employee must have at least a satisfactory performance rating. B, that the recommendation will be considered by the municipal manager who shall either approve or deny such recommendation based upon their determin determination whether such movement is generally within the best interest of the village as an organization including but not limited to such factors as the financial condition of the village c if the employee employee's movement is denied because of work performance or disciplinary issues the employee will not receive a movement and pay steps until the next fiscal year contingent upon an improvement in work performance being documented. Receiving said compensation shall be based upon the village's financial condition as determined by the finance director and the municipal manager and supported by the approved budget for the year under consideration. Section 2, all positions, uh, like a typo there, uh, not identified in this resolution will continue to be compensated as outlined in resolution 20, 2019-06-F passed February 26, 2019. Section 3, this resolution shall be effective immediately upon its adoption. Mr. Mayor, I move for the adoption of this resolution. Second. We'll move and second. Any comments, questions? Clerk, call the council. Ms. Osmondoglu? Aye. Mr. Holter? Aye. Mr. Lee? Aye. Ms. Walker? Aye. Ms. Hermes? Aye. Okay, resolution number 2023 R31 F passes. Next resolution number 2023 R32 SNS. In support of an application being submitted for funding through the Ohio Department of Natural Resources Urban Grant Program. Ms. Osmondo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Resolution 2023 R32 SNS in support of an application being submitted for funding through the Ohio Department of Natural Resources Urban Grant Program. Whereas trees have been planted at Green Hills since construction of the community began in 1936 as part of FDR's Resettlement Act, and whereas Green Hills has been designated a National Historic Landmark by the National Park Service and said designation incorporates the tree canopy, and whereas the cost to maintain a safe tree canopy throughout the village is financially difficult, and whereas funding assistance through the Urban Grant Program will allow Green Hills to address risk concerns in all parts of the village. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Village of Green Hills, Ohio, that Section 1, the ODNR Urban Grant Program funding, 
will allow Green Hills to properly plan for the long-term health of our tree canopy and to maintain our tree canopy in a manner that will protect the health, safety, and well-being of all of our citizens and the general public that pass through our community each day. Section 2, the Council of the Village of Green Hills does hereby support this application and encourages ODNR to give a favorable review to our funding request. Section 3, the municipal manager is hereby authorized and directed to execute and file an application with the Ohio Department of Natural Resources and to provide all information and documentation required to receive funding assistance from the Urban Grant Program. Section 4, this resolution shall be in full force and effect immediately upon its adoption by Village Council. Mr. Mayor, I move for the adoption of this resolution. Second. Okay, you've been moved and seconded. Uh, any comments? Uh, you know, I, I, did, I forgot to mention this when I gave my legislative report, but um, the deadline for this is December 29th, and we're giving it the best shot we can. The demographics that I passed around earlier, I don't know if you noticed, but at the bottom of it where it talks about how we, um, we are not identified as being disadvantaged. So it's kind of an uphill stress struggle for us, but I'm hoping we can make a case to get some money because we really need it. Yeah. 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 All right. Clerk, call the council. Mr. Lee. Aye. Mr. Halter. Aye. Ms. Squather. Aye. Ms. Hermes. Aye. Ms. Osmond-Edward. Aye. Okay, resolution number 2023-R32-SNS dash dash passes. And the next thing we have on the items is uh, make a motion. Somebody want to make a motion for uh, no, for the uh, acting manager in du during temporary absence. I so move to follow her recommendation. Second. Second. Okay. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Um, the motion is, uh, what is the motion? That when Yvonne um, is out. Right. She'll be appointing. Chief Hallworth is in charge. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Make it sound pretty. Yeah. Clerk, call the council. Mr. Lee. Aye. Ms. Ospinoglu. Aye. Ms. Wather. Aye. Ms. Hermes. Aye. And Mr. Holter. Aye. Okay. Any council uh, members want to make any comments? Um, I had a couple. Uh, just a reminder that on the 18th we'll be judging Christmas lights, so it's not too late to get your lights up. And I did think I saw Santa and some dancers out on the commons the night of light up. Is yeah. that where they did they come anyways or? Yeah. yeah, they sent out a message. No. They received the, a message but came anyways, or no? No. Uh, the village put out a headline news letting people know that they would be there. Santa wanted to, Santa I guess, wanted since to. wanted to do it. Oh, anyways. Okay. And, you, and you cannot turn Santa down. <laughs> right, right. And so there's a good picture of the chief on his lap. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any miswishes what he wanted for <laughs> Yeah, let us know how that turns out. <laughs> uh, Anything you, else? You set the calendar out. Is that something we have to make a motion on? Because if so, I want to make a recommendation on it. I, I don't think so. I think okay. it's just informational. We don't need it. Okay, I still want to make a recommendation on it. Can we switch our regular meeting to December 10th in 2024 and just get rid of the whole Christmas Eve meeting? Because I'm not coming. <laughs> I'm usually at, um, <laughs> at family in the evening, and I will not be here at 7 p.m., and I'm pretty sure uh, yeah. most everyone would concur. Yes. Okay. I concur. All right. Do we have a um, meeting this year? Municipal yeah. calendar. Are we meeting in two weeks? No. 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 Okay. This is it for the year. Mm -hmm. um, a calendar would be uh, the 18th for light for reviewing the lights. Yeah. Everyone okay. have a merry and safe Christmas and happy New Year. All right, and this is an opportunity for residents and non-residents uh, to appear before council. We don't have any non-residents here. 
This is the time for citizens to comment on matters before council. When recognized, please come forward to the podium, complete your sign-in street, verbally indicate if you're a resident of Green Hills, then state your comments. If you have questions, questions will be recorded and referred to the manager's office for response. This will allow time for thoughtful and thorough consideration to be given to each question. Council meetings are recorded for ease of transcription. Comments are limited to four minutes. Speakers may not yield any or all of their time to other speakers. She said there was no sign in sheet. Are you good? Oh. I mean, it, it's okay. If you recognize her and can make a note of it, that would be, I oh, think, I would meet that need. I recognize her need. <laughs> Does everybody have a sheet? Okay. I'll just wait till everybody has it. The bottleneck here. Monique Mason Halter, Green Hills Residence. Over the past few months, I have given you all articles and reports about widespread opposition to H.R. 3557, the American Broadband Deployment Act, and other federal bills that eliminate municipal control over wireless deployment. Opposition to H.R. 3557 includes the U.S. Conference of Mayors, National League of Cities, and National League of Counties. If these bills are passed, this could significantly affect the village's income, historical status, property value, safety, and security. It is still unclear to me how many of you have read the materials I've provided to you and contacted our federal lawmakers to ask that they take action against these bills. These bills are being promoted under the banners of streamlining, removing barriers to entry, and closing the digital divide when they actually ignore constitutional protections, conflict with existing federal law, remove states' rights, would perpetuate the digital divide, and they threaten national security, which of course affects our village as well. Last month I provided you with copies and read aloud from a report written by the National Call for Safe Technology about federal bills that will jeopardize national security. Tonight I am also asking you again to strengthen the Green Hills Small Cell Facilities Ordinance so that it is strong as ordinances passed already by other Ohio municipalities. I'm also, I've also provided you with copies of another report, which I will read aloud from, Undermining Local Resilience Will Jeopardize National Security, written by Julian Gresser, co-founder of Broadband International Legal Action Network, BBILAN. Julian is an international lawyer, twice visiting Mitsubishi, professor at Harvard Law School, and an author. One of his key points is weakening local community resilience will impair national resilience. BBILAN offers a practical remedy in this report, but since you only allow four minutes to speak, you may read that if you like to do that on your own time. The group also recommends that lawmakers vote against HR 3557 in any form and any bill it may be inserted into, such as HR 4510. Now I'm going to start reading aloud from the section, local communities are already highly vulnerable. Local communities are prime target of cyber attacks. Water treatment plants, hospitals, police departments, and local governments have recently been hit by hackers at times with disastrous consequences. A cyber attack can also impair local emergency 911 fire response capability. From the section, how impairing Resilience of local communications slash information infrastructure can jeopardize national security. Some national legislation will dismiss the serious threats to local resilience as matters that solely concern these local communities. 
This view ignores the reality that a local disruption can have cascading national repercussions, especially when our country is as vulnerable as it is today. Homogeneity of infrastructure, once a hacker uncovers a generic point of software vulnerability, many towns in America become targets. Exponential rise in, num in number of wireless nodes increases the, quote, attack surface or points of vulnerability in the network. Economic impact, local infrastructure is in integral to the national economy. Disruptions not will affect not only the local economies, but also can have cascading effects on the entire country. Compromise national security communications. Local communication networks are tightly coupled with a broader national security infrastructure. Interference with secure communication channels can compromise national defense and intelligence operations. Good job. Yeah. Thanks for your consideration and happy holidays. Thank you, Thank you, you Thank as you. well. Executive session? Maybe? Yeah, um, Mr. Mayor, I would like to move to go into executive session for the purposes of consideration of compensation of a public employee or official. Second. Third poll of the council? Ms. Hermes? Aye. Ms. Walker? Aye. Mr. Halter? Aye. Mr. Lee? Aye. Ms. Osmanoglu? Aye. Okay, we're in executive session.